One address, thousands of homes, DarrellBaskin.com, or call us at 258-2600. Premarital agreements aren't just for people who are considering getting a divorce. In real estate, they have real application that can protect your assets and your family. Here to tell us more about it, David Kiesling of Richardson Richardson Boudreaux Law Firm. We had an interesting discussion on the radio program on KRMG at noon on Saturdays. Yes. And I would like a, a condensed version of that because I was amazed at the different applications of premarital agreements. And many people don't see themselves as having any need for one. They feel like it's preparing for a divorce. No, and premarital agreements actually can affect people that have real estate that have businesses prior to the marriage or maybe they're on their second or third marriage and they've already acquired assets or real estate that they want to protect for their children and for their children's future. Now, I think that's an important thing to point out because many people because of, of the emotion of a new relationship yeah. especially after maybe a spouse has died or, or something tragic has happened do not really think about the future ten years later when uh, another spouse may die twenty years later and what they're leaving for their children and their grandchildren. Explain some of the application of that? Well, for example, if you have a premarital agreement, or in Oklahoma we also refer to it as an anti-nuptial agreement, prior to entering into that marriage, you would make a full disclosure of all of your assets, all of your liabilities. Your spouse would then have knowledge of what those things are, and you would make an arrangement prior to marriage that would set out what their rights to that property would or would not be upon the end of marriage, either by death or divorce. So if you don't spell it out, then that new spouse has rights to everything. And that's where, of course, we see some of these really nasty situations where the, one of the spouses may have died, and then the children come in and say, wait a minute, this is what my mother left for me and my father left for me, and here's another person who's come in on the scene, and uh, I know my new father loved her or him, whichever uh, the side was, and, and it creates a lot of family tension. So really, a premarital agreement can uh, prevent that and keep families together. That's absolutely correct. And the, the key to making those enforceable is to have full disclosure of all those assets and exchanging those and doing it in enough advance of that marriage that both sides can be independently represented and everybody knows what kind of deal they're getting into. Well, we're seeing more and more of those, uh, especially in my business, I see them for older couples couples who have had some change that uh, want to protect it for their grandchildren and, and their family. What would be important to make sure that premarital agreement is valid and upholds in a court of law when you're no longer there? That's the interesting thing, uh, especially in a death when you're no longer there to oversee it and make sure it's carried out the way you planned. Yeah, well, first of all, it needs to be premarital because the statutes in Oklahoma uh, or directing the courts to enforce premarital or anti-nuptial agreements. Those aren't contracts that happen after marriage, but they're before marriage. Now, the courts can give consideration to other types of agreements, but they're obligated to follow valid premarital agreements and by this statute. And this is separate from a will or a trust? That's correct. It can also address some of the same issues, but the premarital agreement is going to allow the other party, the other spouse, to understand what they will or will not be obligated to or they will or will not have entitlement to upon the death or the dissolution of that marriage by divorce. Very important information that you want to be careful of when you are uh, establishing a new relationship. Now, I, I have one final question. How do you tell somebody, uh, well, I want to get married to you, but I want you to sign these papers ahead of time. Isn't that kind of um, against the whole idea of marriage in the first place where you get everything that I have? Yeah, it, timing is important in every single thing you do. And one of my favorite cartoons is the example of the guy's on his knee and he's handing the big rock to his prospective spouse and she looks at him and says, wait just one minute, let me check with my lawyer first. So timing is very important and actually for the, for the purposes of enforceability, you don't take a premarital agreement to your prospective spouse before she walks down the aisle. You give her enough time. You mean right before. It's like, okay, we're an hour before the wedding. Absolutely. That's coercive. They could, they could argue that that contract is not valid because they're under duress at that time. You want to give enough advance notice, and I would tell you a minimum of 30 days, to allow them to consider it, ask questions, um, ask for amendments to the agreement, have independent lawyer look at that and make determination if that's good for them, and then uh, sign it at that point. And that's very important. David, thank you very much for your expert advice. You are watching The Future of Real Estate. I'm Darrell Baskin.